So right now you're looking at my regular camera view. However, if we push this out just a, now you should see all the things I have at my disposal on my desktop that I see when I broadcast live. And when I conduct my live streams on Facebook and YouTube and Twitch or others, now I have access to making it the most entertaining, informative, and engaging live stream possible. And I wanna offer that to you too. So in this video, I'm gonna show you how to use a tool called Ecamm Live, which at this moment in time is just Mac only. I do have resources for PC users below too in the description, but I wanna show you how to use these tools from all things like how to, while broadcasting, pop up a comment on your screen like this, how to do some fun popovers like maybe this thank you here, or maybe I wanna do a countdown timer like that. Maybe with just the push of a button, I can do a full screen layover like this while broadcasting live, and even how to, while broadcasting live, share your screen or even a view that allows you to write like this. So if that's something that you're interested in learning, stick around because I'm gonna show you all the bells and whistles. Wow. It's time to create a dream stream. Let me show you how to broadcast so you can sail past the competition. Let's go live without, okay, that's dumb. Okay, let's just, Thank you for being here. So, hey, my name is Pat Flynn and I help you make more money, save more time and help more people too. And what better way to help people than actually going live and engaging with your audience. For the last two weeks, I've been going live every single day at 8 a.m. Pacific, 11 a.m. Eastern to go live and help my audience who's going through some struggles right now due to the sort of worldly disease that's kind of going around right now that you probably know about. And in going live every day, I've learned so much about how to make these broadcasts more lively and more entertaining. And I'm using a tool called Ecamm Live, which I absolutely love because you know, there's a lot of options out there. And if you're a Mac user, Ecamm Live is by far the best tool you can use. So in this video, I wanna give you a tour of Ecamm Live and how I use it, how I organize it in such a way where I don't even have to think anymore during my broadcasts. And make sure you stick around because I have a secret weapon that I've been using to make my streams even easier push button easy. And if you're a subscriber or somebody who catches this video within a week after it is published, just know that seven days after this is published, I'm gonna give away one of them. I wanna send one of these secret weapons to you. But yeah, you gotta watch the video, stick around. Plus, let's just get into it. I have a lot of things to share with you. Okay, so this is Ecamm Live, and I'm gonna be looking down this way because my computer is down here, as you can see, even though the camera is right there. Now, if you wanna get a list of all the cameras and lighting and all the things that I use here in my set at home, well, you can go to the link below in the description about my setup. But for right now, just let me take you through the tool. So you have access to a bunch of different tools to help you, and I've organized them in a way where it's sort of like, these are the things that I see over here, these are the things that I hear over here. And there are comments, which is the longest part because engaging with the community is the most important part of the live stream, right? And yes, these comments are being pulled from, these ones were pulled from an earlier YouTube session I did today. And I kept them here because I wanted to use them as demo for you. But Ecamm will pull in comments from wherever else that you might be streaming. So let's start over here with the scenes. Scenes are like different views that you can choose from during your stream. And this is sort of scene one. You can rename your themes if you want. This is what I have as scene one here, which is the main camera. However, I have scene two as a screen share, as you can see here. So this is my computer. I can pull up something like my website. And as you can see, it shows on the live stream as well. Typically you wanna go full screen and just trust that the software works for you so that everybody sees the whole screen and not just like a little tiny portion. And then if I go to iPad view here, you'll see that, well, this is the view we had when we were drawing. And literally it's just an iPad Pro plugged into the computer with an app called Procreate Open, which is what I used to draw. But really you can actually show how you use any other app. I can go to Twitter or Rev or Spotify, what, what have you. I can broadcast what's on my iPad, which is really cool. But what's really cool is I can even add a picture in picture in these scenes as well. So let me go back to the iPad view, for example, and let me go into Procreate here. And again, this is just plugged in via USB. Ecamm sees it as sort of another device that you can choose a scene from, which is really cool. But if I go over here and hover near where it says go live, I'll teach you how to go live in just a minute, but I can add a picture in picture. So here where it says, hello USB, I can, add, I can click this little plus symbol here and now it adds that little picture of me on the bottom left-hand side, which hopefully you can see me waving right now, which is really cool. And I can add that to my uh, computer view if I want to, I'm gonna click play there. You'll see I have it there. And then also just my regular default view. And again, you can have hotkeys to go from one scene to another, but I have a special thing at the end that I'm gonna show you that makes it even easier. But these are the scenes that you can use 
while you're streaming. And whatever scene that you have selected is what your broadcast audience will see. Right below that, we have the overlays. And I can create an overlay like this. I can just hit text, for example. You can even use images that you might already have too. Hello, YouTube. And I'm gonna hit add. And now I can just kind of pop this wherever I want. I can pinch zoom to make it bigger. I can move it around. We can put it wherever we'd like. And now you can see it's showing in this current scene. If this is something I would wanna show in other scenes too, I would move this up to show in all scenes. And whenever I click the eye off, it removes it from the screen and I can click it back on whenever I'd like. So while broadcasting, I can come here and go, okay, well, I wanna show uh, a countdown timer, which you can actually create one down here and set the settings for that. I have other layovers like the thank you GIF. This was an animated GIF that I found that I popped in here. I even have a URL that I often recommend in my broadcast too. And sometimes I have overlays for if I'm not around, but I wanna go live just to get the audience ready for when I go live. If I wanna start a little bit early, I have that too. So again, on the fly, you can create hotkeys for these things in Ecamm Live so that while you're going, you can just have little layovers like this, even full screen takeovers like this too, which essentially you just design in something like Photoshop or have somebody else create it for you. You'd pop it in here using the plus image overlay and then it becomes another thing that you could toggle on and off, on and off, just like that. What a great way to add some flavor and personality and also some fun images that are engaging in your live stream. All right, next down below, you'll see where the sound things are, the things that have to do with sound. And again, this is just how I organize it. You can move these things wherever you would like. Now, I'm not gonna talk about microphones and things like that. I have that all listed in a post down below in the description in terms of what I use, both the high-end versions that I use and budget-friendly options too. But this just shows us whether or not we are too hot, meaning if it gets red a little too loud, we can turn it down here too or turn it, turn it down on our end. Uh, it takes in sound from the iPad and other things. You can also play movies and sound effects as well. So in addition to overlays that are static, you can play movies too, which is pretty cool. But I typically have the iPad muted because I don't want the sound from anything I'm doing there or any notifications coming in through into the broadcast. And it's just mostly me and the microphone. As you can see, as I moved up a little bit, it gets a little hot and that's good to know because I don't wanna be hot for you. Although, yeah, actually no, nobody's ever called me hot anyway. So I guess it's not a problem. And then right next to that, I have the sound effects here. As you can see, I can just click play. <laughs> I have other sound effects board coming from my Rodecaster Pro here. Uh, which I talk about in that equipment tutorial, which adds even more buttons that are just bigger, but you don't need that. You can just do sound effects here. You can import sounds of your own and you can even do like DJ air horns. So yeah, that's pretty self-explanatory. Let's move on to the comments. So comments get imported in from wherever you're broadcasting, which is really cool because that was the biggest thing I was worried about. How can I continue to engage my audience? Yes, I have all these great tools, but are the comments gonna come over? So yes, they are imported over. And in fact, you can do even more with them. On YouTube, for example, when comments come in, you don't necessarily have the ability to take those comments and easily pop them up on the screen so you can share who you're addressing or give a shout out to somebody. But as you can see here, I have a bunch of comments from an earlier stream that I saved and I can even just go, hey, look, just Samson, I can click add to broadcast and it says making coffee, don't start without me. Don't worry, Samson, I won't. Now these will disappear after about 15 seconds because I set them as such. If you don't do that, they're gonna remain there for a long time, in fact, forever, and then it might overlay with another one that you might do, or it's just gonna be confusing, and you might forget about it. Now, before you go live and start displaying comments like this, you wanna make sure you go into settings, and then make sure that it's automatically hiding comments after a certain number of seconds. I have 15 because it's enough time for me to read and other people to read it. it, doesn't disappear right away, but typically this comes off by default which is not good because then it's gonna stick around forever and you have to manually exit and there's a little tiny X in there and it can get a little confusing. So I have it on 15 seconds. You can make it longer or shorter if you wish, but that's just a small tip for you there if you're gonna engage with your community in that way. Now, another cool thing about these comments is if you are on YouTube, for example, and you get a super chat, a super chat, by the way, is a sort of paid comment that allows for a commenter's comment to be highlighted, it's like colored and, and you can donate money to the creator, which is really cool. These get pulled into Ecamm Live as well. So if I scroll up here, you'll see right there, we got Steve with a $10 super chat, which was really amazing, Steve. Thank you for that, by the way. And uh, just, they can come in from your supportive audience too on YouTube. And I know Twitch and other different platforms have uh, their own versions of that as well. I will say engaging with the community here, as you'll see, there's just so much amazing connections that are happening. I'm not even, I mean, there's so many great, 
things that happen here. It's my favorite part of going live is engaging with the community. And if you happen to catch my live broadcast every morning at 8 a.m. and you're in there, thank you. If you haven't yet, subscribe, hit that bell notification icon so you can get notified when I go live every day for you. The cool thing about these tools is it allows you to become a little bit more professional with your show. And even if you're silly and goofy like I can be sometimes, it's still standing out from everybody else who just goes live and it's just one camera the whole time. There's nothing else popping on the screen. There's no sound effects. There's no community engagement. Well, this is an easy chance to stand out. Now, Ecamm only allows you to go live to one platform at a time unless you use a third-party tool such as Restream.io or Switchboard Live. You can stream from Ecamm to those, and those will then broadcast them out to different places if you'd like. I choose to go just live on YouTube because I wanna cultivate the audience there, just reward those who subscribe to my YouTube channel, but you can multi-stream if you'd like. Either way, you're gonna have to set up your accounts ahead of time before you broadcast so you can connect them to Ecamm Live. And so before you go live, just make sure that you have everything set up the way you want it to be. Make sure you have the different scenes that you want. In most cases, you might just start with one plus maybe sharing your desktop and that's it. To get those scenes, just there's these areas up here. If I click plus, for example, now I have, whoa, this is my face cam uh, screen here on my computer, which is not as you can see, very grainy. This is why I like upgrading to different tools because it's just better. Uh, you can switch to screen share or even play a movie from there if you'd like. Uh, and those become different scenes that you get, you get to select here. And I'm gonna actually delete these right now because I don't need those. Let's go back to default. All right. So first of all, we wanna enter a title of our broadcast. And we can just do that right here in Ecamm Live. Just entering a title, going live for a Q&A. Next, you wanna enter a description. This is what shows up in the actual description on YouTube and other places too. So it's a little hard to type here, I found, but you can just describe something. You can click enter and do a bunch of things too. You can put links in there too. So check out the free Q&A with Pat Flynn going live at this very moment. You also wanted to sort of sell the idea of clicking to watch you live, but just make sure. And the reason I say that is because oftentimes people are gonna see these titles in the description and they're in a moment on social media where they could get interested and right then and there, go and check out your stream. However, make sure that after the stream is done, if you choose to save that post on YouTube or Facebook or wherever, you could go in and re-edit the title, re-edit the description to be for the replay viewers, the people who watch it later, because oftentimes, what we say beforehand or as we're going live doesn't make any sense or is irrelevant to those who might want to potentially watch it later. Okay, so we just took care of the title and the description there. Now we need to go to the other side. We need to click on a destination. So I have it here as YouTube. Again, you can click any one of these things and restream or switchboard live will have, have you uh, multi-stream if you want. Then broadcast to public typically is what you wanna do. Uh, and then go live now or you can go to a scheduled one. And I'm gonna show you really quick how we set up a scheduled broadcast, which allows for, at least on YouTube, for you to create a page and a sort of video area where people can connect and, 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 and join the waiting list and get a reminder for your upcoming stream. So typically, if you just wanna go live, you can, you can hit uh, now, unscheduled, and just hit go live, and you'd be ready to go. You'd be broadcasting, countdown really quick, and then you're in. And then when you wanna finish, just hit end broadcast, and you're good to go from there. But if you wanna schedule it ahead of time, which I do advise, I've seen a lot better results by scheduling it ahead of time, getting people excited about it, allowing for people to click to get a notification. This is how you go about it. So we're here in my creator studio right now, and then I'm gonna go to create and then go live. Now I could go live right now if I wanted to, but again, I want this to be something that is scheduled ahead of time to get people excited about what's coming, to know that they should put it in their calendar, all that great stuff. So I could copy and create one from a previous stream, which is super helpful, but I'm actually just gonna do a new stream and then I'm gonna delete it later. So you'd create your title here, title goes here. You'd want this to be public. And then your description there, schedule for later. That's the big one. So I'm gonna hit schedule for later and I can potentially make this, you know, uh, the 31st of March and at a specific time, of course, four o'clock. You could enable monetization if you want. I would definitely recommend creating a custom thumbnail for sure, because that's what people are gonna see as the waiting room exists. And then make sure it's either, yes, it's for kids. If it is, you better be honest about that. It's about COPA laws that are happening. Uh, or no, it's not safe for kids, no. And then hit create stream. Now don't worry, it's not gonna create the stream for you. 
But what this does is it creates one that you can choose from when you're about to go live. So I'm gonna show you what this looks like on the YouTube side of things, and then I'm gonna show you what it looks like on the Ecamm side of things. So I'm back at my YouTube studio. I'm gonna click on videos, and I'm gonna click on live. Any upcoming lives are shown up top, and then below that are live replays. And here is the one that we just did. It just pulls the, if you don't have your own thumbnail, it pulls from your channel art, as you can see here. And I can go here and edit things, but if I actually go to this page right now, you'll see what it looks like. And this is what I would share on social media ahead of the live broadcast, all that kind of stuff. And as you can see, live in 47 hours, people can hit set reminder. People can actually chat as you are waiting. Uh, and that's really cool. So people can hit the reminder, they get notified when it comes out, and uh, you'll have more of an audience which is pretty cool. So I'm back here on videos. As you can see, I've gone live every day for the last two weeks at this point to help people who need help with their business right now, which has been really fun. Here's my upcoming stream for tomorrow. I'm gonna click on that and show you what the waiting page looks like. I definitely went in here and changed, uh, you know, the playlist, the, the tags, uh, the end screens, which you can't do until after, of course but um, changing the title, all that great stuff. The thumbnails, you can see the income stream. I have a name for the show now, which is really cool. This is my 14 day streak. Now, if I go click here, you'll see the waiting page. And as you can see, there's about five people waiting, which, me which means they're literally here on this page right now for whatever reason. Uh, they're here on this page way ahead of time. People have set reminders. I already have thumbs up for that, which is really great. So when I start this broadcast, as I'll show you how to do in just a moment, you'll already have an audience, which is really neat. Okay, so I'm back here at Ecamm Live. And instead of going live now, I wanna pick one that was scheduled. And if I click here, you'll actually see the one that we created, title goes here, there it is. I can click that, and if I were to click that, it says, okay, it's gonna go live in one day. So essentially, I'd have to wait till that specific day and a specific time to go live. I cannot go live one second before. The live button becomes enabled at that time. And if I go and I select the Monday morning one, you'll see it's in about 15 hours and then it'll turn blue and then I can go live from there. I can hit live whenever I want after the time expires, but leading up to it, I can't go live early. So if you choose to want to go live early, you have to set the time earlier when you schedule. Big shout out to Paul Lipsky, who was the one who taught me how to do these scheduling things. And then finally, my secret weapon, the stream deck from Elgato. What's the stream deck? It is this guy right here. This is in particular the 15 button stream deck that allows me to, with a click of a button, do things like that thank you. And I can turn it off just like that. See that? I don't know if you can, I don't know if you can see that. But yeah, okay, it is, you can see it. The full screen takeover that I designed earlier, I can click to go to screen share real quickly or even my iPad view, which again, there it is. And I can go back here, turn that off. This is where I have my countdown timer for my website reviews. And really handy, on the lower right-hand corner, I could go live with a click of a button or I can end broadcast, which is really great because sometimes when you say that you're done with a broadcast, but then you have to fumble to find the actual end broadcast button, it can look really silly and it's just not professional. So I love the Stream Deck. It comes in six button, 15 button and 32 button, I believe. And I'll have all the links below for all the things that I've mentioned here, as well as my toolkit and the equipment posts that I have and other resources to help you get the most out of your live streams too. And like I said, you might be able to win one of these. So what I want you to do is number one, hook me up with a thumbs up that helps with the algorithm. Thank you, I appreciate that. Make sure you hit subscribe and click that bell notification icon so you can check me out live and see how all of this works the next time I go live. And in order to get entered into this random drawing, I'm gonna pick one random commenter, one entry per person. Tell me about your community or what you hope to build in terms of community, even if you haven't started yet. So leave me a comment below. Tell me about your community or who you're hoping to attract on these live broadcasts. And I look forward to seeing those and rewarding one of you in seven days from the moment this is published. This is one of the benefits of subscribing, by the way, so make sure you subscribe because I do these giveaways quite often. So seven days from the moment this is published, I'm gonna select somebody at random. I will pick them, I'll pin their comment up top for a bit so you can see who won and I'm gonna reach out to you and hopefully we can connect so I can ship you a 15 button Elgato Stream Deck, which is what I use too for my live streams. And there are literally integrations with Ecamm Live. It's really cool. Thank you so much. I appreciate you. Looking forward to reading your comments and awarding the winner here. And as always, you're amazing. Team Flynn for the win.